If you have a room in your house that you want to make more purposeful, livable square footage, work with the outline that you have, create unique built-ins, and if you have a vault, think of ways that you can accentuate and highlight the cool things about the space. I think what I really love about it is the idea that this was once just a storage room that had no purpose other than storing boxes, shutting the door, and kind of hiding the mess. What I love about it now is that we've lightened it up we painted the floors, we actually accentuated the vault. So the current vault that's here was already here because this was attic space. So what I wanted to do was just add a little more character in here, add the shiplap that we ended up staining and distressing, and then we added all these built-ins. All I did was work with the outline of the room, created a built-in little nook, these built-in desks, and this fun little reading nook back here in the corner. This house really came alive in this renovation. We got to play a part in restoring this home for this family. It was a really big honor for me and Chip. In designing the Zans Master Suite, I really wanted to personalize the space to fit my client's Southwestern style. We achieved that distinctive look by keeping things clean but unique so it didn't feel too much like a theme. I love this master suite. We've got these brand new, beautiful wood windows in here. But one of the things I really wanted to focus on was this accent wall. We had the cedar wood trimmed down. We added some stucco in here. This wall just adds a lot of texture and dimension in this space. Another thing I really like about this room are these hanging pendants. This is something, especially off of a wall like this, that adds even more dimension and more interest. Let's check out the master bathroom. You know, we really wanted to change things up here. Originally, everything was blue. Blue toilet, blue shower. We really wanted to lighten it up, update it. But on this vanity, I wanted to do something a little unique. I love these white oak cabinets. I love this really cool industrial hardware. But I think the coolest part about this is how this is elevated in the middle. So it's a practical countertop space, but there's also more storage. I reached out to two friends of mine, and I'm using that term pretty loosely. These were people I didn't know real well. I'd worked with them a little bit here and there. They were fairly comfortable financially. Not rich by any means, but they were the type of people that might have a little bit of money in the bank and might be interested in earning a better return than the 1% that the banks were loaning at the time. I took these two guys to lunch, and as sick as I was on the inside, and as much of a panic as I was in, I tried to keep the conversation all business. So look, I'm in a bit of a pickle, I explain. It's not bad news, like I'm in this huge bind or something, but we do have this development called Magnolia Villas underway and we would really be interested in you two financing the completion of it. The bank has essentially capped us at an amount that was much lower than we had initially agreed on. I explained what the status of the development was and what we had done to raise the money so far. I've got all the work on the ground, but I still need $100,000 to get us across the finish line, I explained. I asked them for $50,000 each and laid out some terms on how quickly we believed we could pay each of them back with interest. It was a fair deal, and even though I'd kept it focused on the business aspects, I basically felt like I had spilled my guts to these two guys. One of them was completely silent, didn't say a word. The other guy, I don't know, man, sounds too risky to me. He asked a lot of questions and seemed really nervous about the deal in general. I've never had anybody react that way to a deal of mine, ever. It felt like a kick in the gut. In their defense, this was just not really what they did for a living. They were not angel investors or financial gurus. They were just good guys that I thought just might want to get into this deal with us. Long story short, they both walked away without much commitment and seemed generally uninterested. They were much better friends with each other than they were with me, and I hoped that maybe, maybe the one guy that was being silent would be able to be on my side and would convince his friend to not be so skeptical. I walked away feeling a little bit like Russell Crowe's character in that boxing movie Cinderella Man. I wonder if I was going to have to be that formerly proud man who had once been on the top of my profession and now had to wander around with all my cronies asking hat in hand if I could borrow a few dollars just to buy my kids some milk. We decided we better sit down and go over everything again. 
We went through the old invoices that were still unpaid and the new ones that had come in since we got the news, and we realized that we now had $100,000 in invoices sitting there. So even if those two men decided to make the investment, which at this point seemed very unlikely, all of that money was already spent, and we'd be back to falling behind again the very next month unless we could pre-sell some of the houses or encounter some other windfall. A couple of very long days went by, and I finally got a call from the silent guy I had taken to lunch. He said, hey man, I really want to see the development. My wife and I want to meet you guys over there and maybe walk the properties, just get a better sense of exactly what you're talking about. So we met him over there on the site, and those two walked around just as calm as they could be. This is beautiful, they said. Wow, this is awesome, they said. Wow, I was hoping you'd think that. So what are you guys wanting to do? Why'd you want to come walk the site? I know that meeting was a bit rough the other day, he said. I just want you to know that I've never done this kind of thing before. But when you were talking, you were really speaking my language. I admire how hard you fought to keep this project alive and make sure that everyone gets paid and I was actually eager to help out. But I wasn't sure if it was just my heart talking, you know? So I went back and I told my wife about it and we prayed about this. And well, we've decided that we're gonna give you $100,000. I reminded him that I only felt comfortable with the $50,000 investment so that we could spread the risk out. I know, but we prayed about it and we just feel that this is the right thing to do. You're going to do great here. We need this kind of development in Waco. And we have no doubt you're going to sell all of these houses and it will make a big difference to a lot of people. And if you don't, well, as I said, we've prayed about this. So we don't want you to worry even if you never pay us back. We've already imagined that. So if this doesn't work out like you hoped, just don't worry about it. We're already over it. We don't want this to be a bit awkward as far as our relationship is concerned. My knees almost gave out. It took everything in me not to break down right then and there. This wasn't like a best friend who would bend over backwards to bail you out of trouble. They were just acquaintances at the time. So for them to say something like that came as a complete shock. They had that $100,000 check with them and they handed it to us right then and there. The two of us went home in absolute awe of what had just happened. Then we sat down and considered how best to use that money. There were a number of invoices that were due in two days, but for a moment we wondered if maybe we should invest the money in a quick flip house, something that might turn that money into $150,000 and give us some leeway to pay other bills. But that would mean putting some people off by 30 days or more, and that just didn't feel right to us. So what did we do? We both looked at each other and said, give it away. We didn't mean give it away in the sense of philanthropy, but in recognizing that this money wasn't ours, it was owed to others. So we sat down and wrote out $100,000 worth of checks. We were completely broke again within a week, but everybody got paid. Every bill was up to date. With that check, we were able to buy ourselves another month or so of time to get back on our feet. It's sad looking back because even with that miracle, we still had our doubts. 